This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and today I wanted to cover a few different ways to approach a mechanic where you can click on the screen in your game and your game will figure out where in your game world you are trying to click. So as an example, let's say we have a strategy game and you've got this open field and you click your mouse down and a building appears. Now, the problem is, how do you know that was where the building was supposed to appear? Because when you really think about it, the mouse doesn't exist in that game world. It kind of exists outside of it, and we're arbitrarily choosing where that mouse click correlates to the ground itself. Another way I think of that can be helpful to wrap your head around this is, imagine that same game world, but now imagine you're viewing it from behind a big pane of glass. Now, you can certainly reach your hand out and try to touch on the glass where the building is roughly, but you're not actually touching that building, you're touching the glass, and then it's because of your perspective, your mind is able to go, okay, based on my perspective here, it looks like I'm touching the building even though I'm actually nowhere near it. And it's that sort of same process that we're gonna go through in code so that our game can say, oh, based on where our camera is and where our mouse is, I'm going to extrapolate that this is where you're trying to touch in the real world. And there's a few different ways that you can do this, and each one gets you a little bit of a different result that can be useful for your particular game, and that's why I wanna go through these four different approaches. So let's jump into Unity and get started. So here in Unity, I've got a very simple game setup. All we have is a cube, which I've named Red Cube, and I've applied a red material to it. Now, the first approach I wanna take here is, let's say that this was our world. We don't really even need a ground or anything at this point. This is just our game. We've got a cube floating in space. And if all we cared about was what particular item got clicked? Did an item that can react to being clicked get clicked? And so we can certainly do that. What we can do is let's create a C-sharp script and we'll call this um, unit click. Let's open this up in MonoDevelop. Zoom in a little bit here. And all we need to do, we can actually get rid of both of these here, is we can just say void on mouse down and then we can put in whatever code we want here. Let's just kind of say that we, let's let the whatever unit gets clicked say that it got clicked. So we'll say debug log name plus was clicked. The only th other thing we need to make sure that we have in all of this is that our red cube here has a box collider. And then we'll add the unit click script to that as well. So now when we hit play and we click on that, we see that the red cube was clicked. The box collider is important because that's what actually detects the um, click from the mouse. That's how Unity is um, built to do it. It uses the physics system. And so, like I say, that tells us that, that, that that's what got clicked. However, the thing is, if you notice in our script here, we don't actually have um, any information that's being passed in and out like other methods might do. So all that we're really getting is that object itself. The, this particular unit click component is the only information we have. We can then from there access other components and stuff, but we don't know anything really about the click. And this is really um, noticeable if we do this and if instead of saying, you know, name was clicked, we say transform dot position. And we go back over to Unity, we hit play, we see that I can click on the top of this cube, I can click on the sides of this cube, and now we're always getting that same zero, 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 which is the position of the cube, which is accurate if we're looking for that, but if we were looking for the position of the click itself, we can't get that through these means. And that's really what I wanna get deeper into in these remaining three methods, is ways to really get a lot more information, very get much more granular, much more specific about where you are clicking in your world. The next option we have, I'm actually gonna delete this unit click script from, um, or the component rather, from our red cube. And I'm gonna create a new empty game object. And this is gonna be called click detector. And I wanna make this a separate object because I wanted to sort of kind of show how you can have this sort of empty non-existent thing that's able to just listen for these clicks and then manage it from there. And so I'm gonna create a C-sharp script as well. And this is gonna be called click position manager. So it's gonna be responsible for listening for a click and determining the world position. Open this up in MonoDevelop as well. 
we're going to get rid of the start method, but we're actually going to keep the update method because that's where we're going to be listening for these clicks. Um, update is a great spot for listening for inputs. So we're going to say, first off, we're going to say if input dot mouse, get mouse button down, and then we're going to put an in integer zero. That is um, the left click. One would be the right click. So if we're clicking down, our ultimate goal is going to be, for right now, we're just going to log click position in world space to the console. So we'll simply do that by saying debug.log, and then we're going to log that position, which is going to be a vector 3. So we need to actually create that vector 3. So let's say up here, we'll say vector 3 click position, and we'll just set it to start equal to vector3.1 and I'm actually going to make that negative. So what this will tell us is that if we're ever not processing this click position, it'll just come out as negative one, negative one, negative one, which is admittedly a legal position that we could technically click at, but it's so uniform and it's below the y equals zero kind of ground level, if you will, that I feel like it's a good kind of way to flag and go, huh, maybe that wasn't a proper click. And so now what we'll do down here, we'll create that vector three, we will do whatever processing that we're gonna do, Oops. and then we'll simply debug log click position. So right now, if we were to go into our game, um, add this to that click detector and start clicking, we would just get negative one, negative one, negative one. So first method I want to talk about is this idea of a, um, a built-in method in Unity. It derives from cameras and it's called screen to world point. So we need to make sure we have a reference to a camera. Most typically that's going to be the main camera in the scene. So we can say camera.main and then we can access this screen to world point. Now, this requires one argument, which is a vector three, but it's a little bit misleading because this is really two, um, two pieces of information that are just kind of packed into one vector three. The X and Y values of the vector three are the screen position in pixels, so wherever your mouse is on the screen. And that's actually pretty convenient to get. We can just get that by saying input dot mouse position. And you'll notice that's actually a vector three too, so we don't even have to convert anything. And this, with this, the z um, value is just zero. However, the z value is actually important as well because that tells us how far from the camera we want the position to be. So we need to add to it a new vector three with zero, zero, and then some distance that we want. For now, we can just say, let's just say five. Seems reasonable. Oops. This whole thing, or namely this method right here, gives us the vector three in world position. So we can actually assign this to click position. We'll say click position equals this screen to world point. I'll change this, I'll say method one, screen to world point. So now all we have to do, we can go back into Unity here, make sure I've added the click position manager to our click detector. And now when I hit play and I start clicking in the world, we'll see that we are getting these world positions. Now, they're a little bit, they're not really quite what we were necessarily thinking. If we were trying to click the ground level right now, you'll notice that these uh, values, if I go to the console here, are all above the ground. And that's because we're only actually measuring about five units away from the camera here. So we're probably getting about this far here and that's where we're always ending up clicking. And that's kind of the issue with screen to world point is because it requires this Z value kind of distance, you kind of need to pre-know what that is in order to determine the, the world point. And that isn't really necessarily intuitive because there's an issue where say you're in that game world again, you have this world, you've got your camera, and your distance to the ground from, say, the bottom of the camera is actually pretty close. Like, if you're doing a really close um, position on the ground, 
that number is going to be one thing. However, if you're trying to get something farther away, that number is something different, and you need to you know kind of calculate that on the fly. And that's why this is um, a useful tool for, especially if you're doing something in 2D or with an isometric view, this is a great way to do that. But it can be, um, it doesn't necessarily have all the information you need to always get the precise world position you're looking for, especially if you're trying to get it on, you know, kind of a single level. So that's going to bring us to option two, which is what if in our world here, instead of just kind of being floating in space, what if we had a ground that we were actually trying to click and determine where we are on the ground? Well, we can certainly do that. We can say game object. We're going to create a 3D object. We're going to create a plane. I'm going to reset the position of that. And so this is kind of our ground space now. We can even rename this to ground. And now we have this thing that we can actually click. It's got a collider. So it can, you know, like we said before, it can detect clicks now. It, the second method we're going to do, we're going to call this method2, and it's going to be ArrayCast using colliders. I'm going to comment out the previous method so we don't have it kind of overlapping. And in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to need a ray, and we'll just call this ray, and this is going to equal camera oops, camera dot main again and we're going to use this time we're going to use screen point to ray and for this we just need the mouse position we don't need a distance so we can just put in input dot mouse position and that creates a ray from our from the position of our camera through the mouse just kind of out into infinity the other thing we need is a ray cast hit which is going to kind of be, be automatically populated with the information where the raycast hits that ground for us. So we're going to call this hit, and we don't actually have to assign it right now because the ray, the actual act of raycasting is going to assign this um, procedurally. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if physics.raycast, I'm going to pass in the ray, and we're going to, if we scroll down here, we'll see this one here, out raycast info. This out means that the, actually the information, this information is going to be created by running the method and put, kind of export it out to this variable for us. So we'll give it that for it to um, output to. And we'll say, so if raycast hits, so if that raycast hits a collider of some sort, then what we'll do is we will assign, to click position, we'll assign hit dot point. And what's really nice about Raycast Hit is it has a lot of information about the collision itself, which colliders were involved, um, or what, what collider was involved with the Raycast, uh, and it gives us the exact point where that Raycast hits that collider. So we'll simply assign that point to click position, and once again debug log the click position. So we'll save this, go back into Unity. Uh, something is not... oh when you assign an out ver uh, parameter, you do have to specifically label it as an out in when you're doing the method call as well. So we'll save that again, jump back over here, and now we can hit play. So now we see when I start clicking on the ground, we see that we get the exact position in the world on that ground level, which is nice. It's, we can go all the way to kind of, it's a 10 by 10 here, so we hit almost the five edge on this side, same thing over here. Actually, we see here there's a little bit of a discrepancy between the pixels on my screen that we're getting our negative one, negative one, negative one. And that's because we're only assigning this if the raycast actually hit something. And so it's just staying as that negative one otherwise. But there's also another little issue here, which is that if I now go over here and try to click on the cube, you'll notice that we're not getting the ground position, we're actually getting the actual positions on the cube itself. And that's because this raycast doesn't know specifically to only hit the ground. In order for us to do that, we need to do a little bit of work in the Unity physics system. We need to create a new physics layer. So we're going to go up here to layers and go add layer. We're going to add a, um, we'll call this just ground click, 
and go back to ground here. You always have to make sure you can't just add the layer, you have to go back and specifically add it. And then in our click position manager, we're going to create a public variable, and it's going to be a public layer mask. And I'm just going to call this click mask. And so this is going to tell us what layers we should actually pay attention to and allow to be clicked. So that will appear in our click detector. And we're only going to use the ground click. We could technically check off multiple ones. We could check off UI if we wanted to, things like that. But right now, all we care about is this ground click um, to only hit the ground. Now, the other thing we need to do, however, is we need to specify that this Raycast should use that layer mask. So the particular version of the Raycast we're going to use is this one right here, where we have our Ray and our hit Raycast hit info, and then we're going to have to add this float max distance as well as the layer mask. You can't just add the layer mask or this will not work. So what we'll do is we'll add a float. We'll just say something like 100 for the maximum distance. You can choose any number that works for you. And we'll add our layer mask where we can simply add by adding click mask. It asks for an integer notice, but you can add a layer mask just as it is and it will automatically convert that for you. So we'll save that. And now what we'll see here is we can hit play again and we'll check and we're still on the ground level. And even when we click on the cube now, we're ignoring the cube itself and only clicking on the position on the ground. Now, if you have a contained level, this may work perfectly for you. However, let's say you've got something that's more sprawling or you want to be able to check the position much farther out and you, or you don't necessarily want your ground level to be tied to the physics system or this physics layer in this way. And you want just a, you just want a convenient and consistent way to get a position on a particular plane. Well, Unity actually has this covered, though they don't really, it's not something that you will find readily unless you really pour through the documentation. And that is through a system called the Plane class. Now, the Plane class should not be confused with the game object plane that you can add here. This is actually just a game object with a mesh uh, renderer and mesh collider on it. The Plane class is something actually different. So we're going to do method, method three, Raycast using plane. So for this, we're actually going to create a plane, and we'll just call it plane, and that's going to be a new plane. And what a plane basically is, is it's not a physical object in your world, but it's this sort of a mathematical idea, a construct of a particular two-dimensional field that exists in your world. The easiest way I can think of to think about it is the idea of like sea level on Earth, where we you know use it to determine altitudes and things like that, like a mountain is certain so many feet above sea level, or Death Valley is several feet below sea level. Now, in order to create a plane, you could just create an empty plane. However, there are two pieces of information you really need. You need the direction, that the plane is facing, and you need the position of any one point on that plane. Based on those two things, Unity can extrapolate the rest of the plane for you. And there's a couple ways to do this. One is you can use a vector 3 for the normal, which is the direction. If you're familiar with meshes or, or um, shaders, you're probably familiar with normals. And then the second thing is what changes. You can either specifically say what point exists, or you can choose a distance from the origin, from 0, 0, 0. I tend to like this one. It's a little bit cleaner, I think. So our normal that we want is just facing up. You know, the ground kind of points directly upward. So we're going to say vector3.up for our normal. And then for our distance, we, I want this to be right at 0, 0, 0. So we're just going to say 0f for our distance. There is a fourth option for creating planes, which is you can just determine three arbitrary points which will create a flat surface, which then gets expanded infinitely to the plane. But um, I feel like unless you have a very specific reason for using it, you're probably going to use the other two more often. So that creates our plane. And then we're going to do another ray cast from the um, screen point to ray. So we're just going to use this exact same information here. I am going to comment all this out so that we, again, don't overlap our efforts. 
Now, instead of a raycast hit being exported this time, we're going to the what we're going to do when we raycast to this plane is we're going to just get the distance um, along the ray. So we just need a float here, and I'm just going to call this distance to plane. And we're not going to assign that right now. And then we're going to say if plane dot raycast, and all we need is that ray. And we're going to give it an out of that. So we're going to cast the ray to the plane. And if it collides, it will output the collision distance to distance to plane. Then all we need to do is get the point along the ray where it collided with the plane, which we can do with ray dot get point, And then pass in that distance to plane. So this is the vector 3 that we ultimately want. So once again, we'll assign that to click position equals that. And then finally, we'll debug the click position, or log the click position. So we can go back here, hit play. And now what we'll see is that we can click, we get our ground positions. We still ignore the cube because we're not actually interested in either of these objects now. We're just kind of working with this invisible um, theoretical plane, which happens to right now um, align with the grid that we see in the scene view. But now we can even click off the world and get positions there. We can click way out to the horizon and get some pretty big numbers as we go further and further out. So these are, like I say, three ways, really four ways if you include the unit clicking, that you can uh, find where exactly you're clicking in your world. I'm going to put up a quick summary sheet here that kind of just shows the pros and cons of each of these and you know, kind of think about situations where you might want to use one over the other. And hopefully one of these is useful in your game. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.